Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be discussing pH dependence and the isoelectric point of amino acids. We're going to start by recapping the structure of amino acids. We're going to introduce this idea of this, this, sub, this particle called the Zwitter ion. We're going to define what we mean by isoelectric point, see how it relates to and is dependent on pH, and think about it in the context of applying it to forensic science. So this is the general structure of an amino acid. So just to remind you, there's two key functional groups that must be present, connected together for it to be considered an amino acid. Firstly, we have a carboxylic acid group, which is acidic. That is, it therefore it is able to lose a proton. Okay, this is also known as an alkanoic acid group more um, officially. We also have labeled in the blue an amine group, which is basic. And that therefore means that it gains a proton. So this is the reason that we call it an amino acid because it contains both carboxylic acid and amine groups together on this end carbon. Remember that R is the side chain, which can be uh, you know, of a range of different sizes and, and shapes and structures, um, but that these functional groups are what make it an amino acid. But so we have both an acid, acidic and basic functional groups next to each other. Okay, which then what we see is, you know, this curious behavior, this, this forms this substance, this particle, type of particle we call a Zwitter ion. That is, we say it's a dipolar ion, that the proton from the acidic group over here is often able to actually transfer directly across to the basic um, amine group over here, which is, has the tendency to gain a proton. And so then most of the time, in solution anyway, that the amino acid tends to exist in this form. We call it a Zwitter ion, because it, which has both positive and negative charges. It comes from the German word for two, which is zwei. Okay, so it's a like a, 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 a two ion. Okay, is kind of how this this works. Okay, because it's an ion that's got both positive and negative parts, so it's neutral overall because the positive and negative um, kind of cancel each other out, but they both exist in that um, situation. And so then that, that brings us to what we call the isoelectric point for an amino acid. So that is, it's a particular pH where the amino acid exists in this neutral Zwitter ion form. Okay, so we said so that that's kind of the point at which we would find it. So iso being same and then so same electric. Okay, so same charge or kind of neutral charge point. So now if we take that and if we say, all right, well, what if the pH is below that? That is, it's more acidic, there's more protons around. What happens is that that's Zwitter ion, an extra proton is, don um, is, is donated to or kind of accepted on that, the C double O minus group over here. That is, we're in a situation where all available places for protons um, are filled up. Okay, and so what we have, instead of being a, a positive negative ion, this, this Zwitter ion, that we actually have a positive ion overall. It's still got the positive charge over here, so it's cation. A cationic version. But let's say we come back to that middle with the Zwitter ion and we say, well, let's bring the pH further up. That is, there's fewer protons around than that. What happens then is that all available protons are stripped away. So this extra proton that's on the nitrogen here is taken away and we're just left with a negative ion, an anionic form. And so what we see, and what we're going to unpack a little further in a sec, is this idea that the pH of the solution an amino acid is in has a huge effect on exactly which version of it we're going to find. Is it the neutrally charged Zwitter ion in the, in the middle, the, the, the one that's got the balance of the charges? Is it going to be the positive cation version? Is it the negative anion version? And by manipulating the pH, we can control which version we will find, not just, well, we'll just kind of wait and see what we find. Okay, so... If we look at the pH kind of spectrum, this continuum from low acidic pH to higher basic pH over on the right. So if we look at this particular amino acid, alanine, okay, it's the simplest one there is. Now, we said that kind of in the, the, there's a point in the middle, this isoelectric point, where the Zwitter ion predominates. It's the main thing we would find. Okay, it's got a positive charge on the nitrogen, negative charge over on the, the um, C double O group over here. Okay. As we increase the pH, we've got fewer protons around the anion predominance. We've stripped away the protons. If we take that now and we start to shift the pH back again, we go through the Zwitter ion to the cationic version, which is the positive charge. 
And then that means that in this middle point where it's only the Zwitter ion that we find, that is the isoelectric point for this amino acid. Okay, so um, before we move on to think about forensics, now one of the things to be aware of here is that the isoelectric point is specific to that amino acid. It's not like saying, well, pH neutral is seven, therefore the isoelectric point is seven is that this, this is a point we can experimentally determine, but it's specific to that acid, saying, all right, well, so for this acid, it might be pH 5.5. This other acid, it might be 7.5. This other one, it might be 3.2. Whatever it might be, it just very much depends on the amino acid itself. Um, we can measure it. We can use that information. It's freely available. I haven't got a slide to, to demonstrate this to you, but it would be worth um, you know, referring to some other resources that show you these values. So we can use it. Um, because we know that it exists. And that's where we come in for applications for forensics. Now, one of the techniques we're going to look at in a further video is this one called electrophoresis. Um, so electrophoresis is a compound word meaning, you know, Greek for charge and being carried. It's a, it's a technique that involves carrying charge and using charge, this, this idea of charge, um, to help separate substances like amino acids and like DNA. That's kind of where the main applications kick in, DNA in particular. Okay, and so we have amino acids that we put kind of on this porous paper or a, or a gel surface um, in, in other contexts. We apply a voltage across that, and depending on the charge of the amino acid, that they will move to one end or the other. Um, and by controlling the pH of the, the solution, we can therefore um, affect which version of the amino acid that we'll find, and therefore which way it's going to go. That's kind of the key principle that we're looking at here. Okay, so we revisited the structure of amino acids where they have both an acidic and basic groups. Because we have an acidic and basic group joined together that we have this ability for the proton to move from one side to the other to form a zwitter ion, the dipolar ion. It's got a positive and negative side at the same time. That each amino acid um, has this point called the isoelectric point where the zwitter ion is what we would find. And that this, the, the, the version of the amino acid that we find in solution is dependent on pH. So it's de dependent on the availability or the amount, number of protons around as to whether it's the cationic version, the zwitter ion, or the anionic version. And that the, fun the fundamental principle of how this works gives it application for forensic science or separation science um, in the technique of electrophoresis. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.